We're back in Frankfurt at Eurobike, and this time I'm on the hunt for the latest gravel and adventure bike tech. There's loads of this stuff here, and I can't wait to show it to you. So strap on your Grosse Jungerhosen, and let's get finding it. That's uh, German for, for big boy pants. Got a really exciting gravel bike that I've spotted for you here. So this is from the Polish brand Rondo. You may remember we rode their Hurt gravel bike in Poland uh, a few years back and had loads of fun. But this is a new bike, it's called the Milk. Now, what's interesting and exciting about this is that Rondo likes to think differently about bikes and isn't afraid to just do things that have never been done before and break convention. And they've decided that, well, a lot of gravel bikes are sort of coming from road bikes and then sort of being tweaked and adapted and they've gone another way and just decided well what if we just build a gravel bike and design it completely from the ground up with a completely different geometry that's more suited to adventure riding and gravel riding and off-road riding and that's what they've done so the geometry of this bike is not really like any other gravel bike I've seen it's got a really long wheelbase it's more akin to sort of a well like a, a cross-country mountain bike also the head angle here look at this look at this this is like really slack and and stretched out at the front loads of front center and this is a 68 degree angle so again it's for that sort of off-road handling and it's sort of longer in the top tube as well I'd be really intrigued to see how this handles in an off-road environment but other design features so you've got loads of tire clearance i mean for, if you can, you can run 650b or 700 but if you run 700 you've got clearance for up to 47 millimeters officially rated which is loads because it you know i love running 45 millimeter tires in a, in a gravel bike it's got really distinctive tube shapes as well it just doesn't really look like sort of anything else i've seen before and then at the bottom of the fork uh, in the sort of dropout area here you've got the the twin tip fork which is a feature we saw before on the hurt so the idea here is that you can actually adjust where the axle sits within the bottom of the fork to tweak the geometry of the bike it's quite a clever little idea you can run it one by or two by if you want and it's interesting to see it's got a round seat post as well i like seeing that because it means you can run a dropper i like droppers the front of the bike's really unique it's really wide and and squared off and just practical the whole bike is about fun and practicality and uh well i'm really keen to see what you guys think of it so let us know in the comments Pirelli have got some new gravel tyres. Also, I've got to show you this behind me. This is actually the 3T Exploro of Matteo De Marchi, and it's come straight from Unbound with all the, the dirt on it, but I love it when they do that. It, this looks so cool. I hope the cleaners don't come around and give it a polish by mistake later. Anyway, they've got some new tyres, so he actually used those tyres in races this year as prototypes, and it's this tyre here. So it's called the Cinturato RC. And what Pirelli have done is worked with the, the pro riders as gravel, still a very much evolving sport. And they've listened to the feedback of what they need and what they want. So this tire has a very sort of faster tread profile down the center line of the tire where you want more speed, especially on roads and, and faster, less technical bits of gravel. But the edges of the tire are a lot more built up with much bigger knobbly bits. Um, and the knobbly bits as well go in the opposite direction to the faster tread. So this can sort of dig in more and give you that bit more grip when you, you sort of bank in the tyre around corners. It's also available in two widths. So you've got a 40 and a 45 uh, millimetre width. And they've actually beefed it up as well because intuition in the past was to make a faster tyre. You wanted to make it lighter and thinner and decrease the rolling resistance. But for gravel, the pros have come back and gone, no, we want it beefed up, we want it heavier, we want it to have more resistance against sharp cuts and punctures, as that can be what often decides the race. So it's got, it's a bit heavier, but it's got better puncture protection. Gravel bikes are more beefed up and usually a bit heavier than road bikes, but who says they have to be heavy? Not Schmolke, the German lightweight carbon fibre specialists. They've got this bike, it's called the Infinity, and in this full build you can see before you here, full gravel build, with tubeless tyres, 7.1 kilograms. That is incredible. So light for a gravel bike. That's lighter than most disc brake road bikes. So what have we got on here? Well, we've got a full uh, Campagnolo e-car uh, gravel specific group set with hydraulic disc brakes, 160 uh, rotor front and rear. 
we've got the Schmorker SL saddle. This isn't the lightest saddle uh, that they do. They are, you know, sort of weight weenie brand, but this one's actually got a bit of padding on, which is good because it's, you know, a gravel bike. We've also got the TLO uh, bar and stem and seat post from Schmolke, uh, which is a flared sort of gravel bar. But I mean, the carbon on here, oh, it's just, oh, it's amazing. It all just looks like so nice, but it's also all really light. Uh, this seat pin in particular, it just looks so minimal. And then you've got this nice carbon seat collar as well. All these little weight saving things, but this is still a functional bike. I can see that it's got mounting points on it as a gravel adventure bike should for all your, your bottles and your bags or whatever you want to attach onto the bike. Whew. Proper cool, isn't it? I've come over to Ceramic Speed and they've got some new oversized pulley wheel systems, which is always nice to see. They're always very nice products and satisfying to give them a nice spin and see how smooth they are. Now this is the Explore and this is designed to be compatible with SRAM Rival, Force and Red group sets and also be used in gravel applications. Now they reckon that over a standard Rival drivetrain this is going to save you a couple of watts. Of course some critics are going to go yeah but if you use it in a gravel event where your drivetrain gets really dirty like after five minutes, oh, what's the point? Well, I asked Ceramic Speed that, and they, they reckon that because when your drivetrain does get dirty, that your chain does become less efficient. But this is made worse when your chain is articulated uh, more by going through tighter angles with traditional small jockey wheels. So that articulation becomes more magnified. But if you've got your, your, bigger, your bigger pulley wheel system on here, that articulation is reduced. So there's still a gain to be had by using uh, oversized pulley wheel systems in gravel. That's, that's what they're saying. Um, you've also got grease injection ports on the back so that you can maintain it. And they've got a, a range of different greases. So they say that pro gravel riders have been using these in, uh, in, in the biggest gravel races. But that's not all. There's also a really cool collaboration here on the stand that I've spotted, which is between Ridley, Ceramic Speed, an Apigura. So this is just sort of prototype uh, sort of stuff at the moment, but you can see what they're doing. So these are Apigura bags, which are, are really lovely things, but they're sort of prototype aero ones. But with gravel racing get more, getting more and more competitive, it seems like a natural progression for the sport to start making these storage systems more integrated into the bike and more streamlined and more aerodynamic. But I think they look fantastic. Of course, I love aero stuff. When you go on your adventures, it's always important to make sure you've got plenty of tools so that you can be self-sufficient in the wilderness. Unfortunately, Topeak has got some amazing gadgets here at the show. Starting with this, it's called the BB Hide and Tool. And the amazing thing about this is it can be stored inside your bottom bracket in the hollow axle of a, a SRAM dub crank set, which I think is absolutely brilliant. And then inside it, there's just loads of useful tools and functionality, including a chain breaker and a little multi-tool. It's brilliant. But another brilliant bit of gravel tech that I have to show you is this. It's called the wishbone. Now, if you've ever ridden with a big uh, saddlebag on your adventure bike, then you'll find that sometimes when they're fully loaded, they can start to sway a bit like a pendulum, especially when you ride out the saddle. So Topeaks invented this little wishbone attachment, which goes onto the back of your saddle and then comes down like this. And it's just sort of a metal bar that just stops the bag from that, doing that annoying swaying from side to side. Really simple idea, brilliant. I need that in my life. Bit of Italian bike porn for you here. This is a Cipollini Ego. I've not seen one of these in the carbon before, and it's Cipollini's new gravel bike. It looks incredible. So it's got that kind of signature Cipollini thing where it has this exposed carbon weave showing on large sections of the frame, but it, it just looks really, really smart. This one's also fitted out being a gravel bike with Campagnolo ECAR or ECAR group set. So it's got the uh, Campagnolo ECAR gravel wheels as well. And well, it, it looks absolutely fantastic. The fork is 510 grams and the frame is 930 grams. So pretty, pretty lightweight, pretty competitive for a gravel bike, but it's still practical. It's got mounting points all over the place. So you've got mounting points hidden under here so that you can fit full mud guards or fenders if you're American, yet still have the room for high volume tires. You've got your bottle cage mounts, bento box mounts, and all these mounting points on the forks for extra bottles, storage, bags, whatever you like. Neat feature as well, is here on the seat tube, you've got a little bolt holding a carbon plate in place, which neatly covers up where you would mount 
a front derailleur. So compatible with both one by and two by setups. It's running one by here. So they've just got a nice, neat little plate covering up where the derailleur would go and just makes it look very smart. I love some good bike bags and Brooks, one of the oldest companies in cycling, founded in 1866, has got some really nice examples here. So it's the full shebang. You've got, you know, your seat bag, your top tube bags, you've got bar bags, uh, frame bags and pannier bags as well. But they're aimed at different things. So like, for example, this one's more of a sort of commuter uh, type bag, whereas these are more adventure type bar bags and they're all fully waterproof with welded seams really sort of heavy duty but nice and tactile and then got some nice details so these straps are designed out of a special material that's intended like where well, it's said according to brooks that it doesn't rub away and damage your frame as some straps can do and these logos they're all reflective as well just really nicely made bags like them well i hope you've enjoyed this look at the latest gravel and adventure road by tech here in Frankfurt. Let us know in the comments what your favourite thing is that you've seen and uh, well I'm going to sit here and enjoy my traditional German sandwich and some Apfelsaft. I'm really getting into this this whole Germany thing. Bye.